So you you make coffee for the podcast. You don't have creamer. Instead of sucking it up, you go outside to the truck to use the truck to go buy creamer. And the truck is gone because your dad took it. So you go back inside to get keys to your own car and you've locked yourself out of the house. Yep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caffeine Duck. Don't worry, Gabe is alive and well, and in his house, he made it back inside. We are good to go. I am your co-host, Drake McRae. You can find me on YouTube, at Drake McRae, where I give reviews and analysis of various games and other media content. Gabe, would you care to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Gabriel Annan. Uh... Currently, I'm just doing Caffeine Duck podcast, and then later on, we'll be opening up a couple of different avenues of channels uh, for music video content, uh, 3D production, and more. So stay tuned for that. Right on, man. Right on. Caffeine Duck is a show of long-form discussions about relevant gaming and media subjects. I'm going to hit Gabe with a surprise question right now. Since this is the Caffeine Duck podcast, I have a cup of donut shop medium roast coffee in a Mickey Mouse copyright free mug. I actually don't think this Mickey Mouse is copyright free. I think the other one is public domain, but I still got the mug, still got Mickey. So what I'm wondering is what are you drinking and what are you drinking it out of? So I got a Pete's coffee with a bunch of creamer in it. I'm doing Jesus and coffee. Dude, praise the king, baby. I love it. I love it. Well, no need to beat around the bush. We're going to get right into the show. Today, we are talking about Halo, the franchise as a whole, how it got to where it's at and where it should go. The reason today's discussion is on Halo is because this past week, the following news was reported. Multiple outlets have reported that a rumored Halo Battle Royale has been cancelled. On the Xbox Era podcast, Insider Special Nick was discussing with his other Insider and YouTuber co-host, Colt Eastwood, in that he had claims that the Halo Battle Royale game was cancelled. Nick and his fellow co-host, John Clark, say that they have independently corroborated these claims. The rumored game was known as Project Tatanka and it seemed like developer Certain Affinity was handling it. So we're gonna go on the suspicion that these reports are true. There was a battle royale in production for Halo and it was indeed canceled. What are your thoughts on the project and its cancellation? So battle royale is not really my personal thing, but I do recognize it as a legitimate game mode. This is a Mm -hmm. game mode that people enjoy, they play. Every game needs to have it for their own format, right? I know it really kicked off with, um, oh gosh, we had Apex Legends, we have uh, Fortnite. PUBG was the first one. That was like the first really big one, and then Fortnite took off. Yeah, I would say, I would say, yeah, PUBG, I remember when that first came out, dude, it was so, it it was the hottest game on the market. Bro, PUBG slapped. I actually loved PUBG when it first came out. I played yeah. the crap out of it. Wasn't it a mod of some other game? I didn't... Oh, it's like a zombie game or something. I don't recall. But, uh, I don't know. But the way, I, the way I see it is that every video game on the market currently that does multiplayer seriously usually needs to have a form of a battle royale with their own niche to it, right? Like Call of Duty. You know how Call of Duty plays in their arena kind of warfare? Um... It's nice that they have a war zone. Uh, it's it's very strange to me because like Halo's format with the way that their weapon systems work, their combat systems, as well as the kind of reaping rewards with their armor sets and whatnot. Like I'm shocked that they're not doing battle royale. That's like it's so written for it. It's so ready to go well, as a game. Halo Infinite has or at least it had, I don't know if it still does have it, but it had a game mode where it was an elimination process type game mode, which is essentially a battle royale, except it was only like 12 players, I think. And so they were, 
experimenting with the format, I agree with you. I think if you want to be incredibly relevant, you do need a battle royale game mode. It doesn't have to be like 100 players. I think Apex is only like 40 or 50, but it needs to be larger scale and it needs to be attached to some kind of main game. Apex is like a standalone thing, but even Fortnite has other game modes on top of a battle royale. So does Call of Duty. It's becoming less of like the staple of a game and more of part of a larger expanse, a larger platform. So I feel like Halo would have been perfect for that. I'm a big fan of battle royales. I know they get a lot of slack, but I play a ton of Fortnite. I think it's an absolute blast. I love the competitiveness. I love feeling like every game and every life matters. And I'm personally really disappointed this is not going to be a thing. I feel like it would have made Halo a lot more relevant. It would have made it a lot more mainstream. I think Infinite needed it. If they were going to release it, it should have been on the Infinite platform. And they really, really needed something like that. I think because they aren't expanding into this broader mainstream game mode, I think Infinite's going to kick the can. I really feel like a Battle Royale was Infinite's only real hope. I know they're doing a lot of stuff, but I also read this, like, uh, this news article about Infinite that they're cutting back on major DLCs and seasons, and they're just doing updates, which tells me they're accepting Infinite's fate. And I'm not surprised I'm seeing this on the same week that I'm seeing this Battle Royale news, you know? Infinite was very much a hellish development. I mean, everybody on the internet knows this, right? Yeah. Um, we live in Washington. When I was in school for video game development, at, over at Lake Washington Institute of Technology, we I had like somebody tell me up front that when they first developed the slip space engine, they didn't even have a control Z button. Which for those of you that don't know what control Z does, that's an undo button. It's kind of like what you every software has a control Z. Photoshop, uh, Substance Painter, doesn't matter. Um, the fact that your game engine, when you were initially developing it, doesn't have a control Z, it's like I very much wonder what the limitations on slip space is. And that's why I think maybe Battle Royale is not working out. It's like, is there something wrong with this slip space engine in, of it, in and of itself? I don't know what the capabilities of that engine are. I'm not saying that I do. Never played with it, never use it. I'm still building up a portfolio just to even break into that industry. So that's just my little disclaimer. But I'm I'm having a I'm having a funky feeling that they're gonna have to abandon slip space at some point. It's a capable engine. I just don't. They are. I don't know they are. Know. They're they're and, abandoning slip space right now. Yeah. Actually, there's there's we'll get into it a little later. I do have a segment on that, but they are abandoning slip space for Unreal Engine. So I'm not surprised as well that. As those reports come out, we hear about this canceled Battle Royale. It seems like the limitations of the Slip Space engine paired up with the release of Unreal Engine 5 as a very good, very superior, very next-gen type of game development platform. I feel like that killed the direction that Halo was going and where they wanted to take it with the Slip Space engine. And so I think that's why you're seeing a very large scale cutback on everything to do with Infinite is because of that Slip Space engine. I feel like that it's just a very mm -hmm. limited platform compared to what they made with Unreal Engine 5. When you compare, uh, I don't want to compare and contrast engines, right? But like, let's put it like this. I can download Unreal and use it right now. Slip space is exclusive to 343. So when you're hiring new bodies, you have to teach every single body how to use their how to use this slip space engine. Which that's not time efficient. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. It's actually better just to use a product that everybody's familiar with and then bring them on and then they just know what to do. No, that's fair. That's fair. It's uh Having your own engine is not an efficient way to go about things, especially when something like Unreal exists and it's so powerful. Like everything, I, I'm not a game developer. I don't make anything. I don't understand the process, but I know people who do. And I read the internet probably too much. And I know pretty much everybody's hopping on the Unreal Engine train. Um, so I don't know 
why you would continue with something like slip space if it's not superior. So I actually have to give credit that maybe in the short term, Halo suffers, but the switch to Unreal is probably the most wise decision as well as the cancellation of projects that are attached to the slip space engine for better or for worse for the um, immediate future of the franchise, which yeah. we'll take that into the next part of our discussion, which is going to be about the current state of the Halo franchise. Halo Infinite DLC has been canceled. The Battle Royale has been canceled. All future content for Halo Infinite will come in small form patches. The Halo television series has been panned by fans of the Halo franchise, but it is about to release a second season focused on the fall of Reach, which is generating some level of hype. So the question really is, what are your thoughts on the current state of the Halo franchise? Positive, negative, anything in between? So, I love Halo Infinite's gunplay. Its gunplay mechanics are actually, like, probably, in my personal opinion, hot take, I think it's the best Halo has ever done, thus far. Fair enough. Um, it's... It's it is modern. It is up to par, and it plays like how I think a Spartan. What is it? Spartan threes. Spartan mm -hmm. I think it's Spartan fours. Spartan fours. Okay, yeah. It it feels like how Spartan fours would play. Mm -hmm. A little bit more quick on their feet. But I'm I'm hearing. I heard rumors that they were doing a reboot of the franchise in general. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But for now, I, I really want to like narrow in on what Halo is today and what the franchise is and really how we got here. So when I look at Halo today, I see a fandom that is craving, right? Like Halo is far from dead. If you go on YouTube, you'll see videos that have hundreds of thousands of views that were posted in the last 48 hours that have to do with Halo specific content. Videos about the Halo show, panning it, have millions of views, right? People are still talking about Halo. It's still remarkably relevant today, despite the fact that Halo 5, dramatic failure halo 6 was halo infinite and it didn't really work out it didn't seem to generate the hype that other halo games did and i would overall consider it a failure with how it launched with multiplayer how the campaign kind of cuts off and you can tell that they had other intentions to add more to the story that aren't going to be fulfilled you're hearing about cancellations you're hearing about engine changes so the franchise is in chaos but it's still incredibly relevant and i find that interesting how halo maybe because of the good faith that it built up through the first four or five games depending on your opinion of halo 4 so but, yeah sorry i don't mean to interrupt no go for it go for it I would say in the current state of Halo, it's still, I agree with you. It still has a place on the market. People want good Halo games, right? And I disagree with a lot of other people. I actually think that 343 is a very capable company. I agree with that, actually. I, I don't have a lot of complaints about 343 besides story direction. But even that, I think they have done well in the past. So I do think they're very competent and they make great games. Like I think Halo 4, 5, and Infinite feel really good. And that says something. I like playing them and I like the shooting mechanics and I like the weapon designs. And I even like the art style, how they went from 4 and 5 to this more modern style too. Then they made Infinite and they went back to a more Halo Combat Evolved style and it still looked really good. So I'm... I think 343 is actually quite competent. I'm with you. Yeah. I, I think the future of the franchise really does boil down to the company that's making it. Mm -hmm. um, where I feel that Halo 4 was actually, to me, a good game. It was also a, ga a good game with a great story. Uh, I actually do like Halo 4's story. They started to slip with 5. Um, 
but I mostly blame kind of the advertising team for five because they, the advertising team didn't look like they actually knew what the game was. Like it looked like Spartan, a Spartan lock hunt chief. And then it would have like maybe two different endings at the end of it. But at the end of the day, that's not what Halo five was about. It mm -hmm. was very much like you saw one cut scene where those two actually duke it out. And then they're best, be best friends at the end. Which is just like, okay, this is totally misadvertised. Yeah. And I think that's where it mostly kind of slipped, as well as just like probably poor writing. I will say, it, in my opinion, poor writing. Infinite, I think, was a little bit more of a chaotic development because it was a recovery. Like, how do you mm -hmm. recover from... It's like Star Wars Episode Eight going into Nine. It's like, how do you recover from that? Like, where do we take the franchise from here? When you have one weak chain link, it's really hard to maintain a good product right after that. Well, especially so, on a franchise and a story that's been built over time for so long with good faith that when you do something that is dramatically damaging, it's significantly more difficult to recover than if you start out the gate weak and then maybe make a sequel that is strong and you're able to recover the good elements of the beginning and then build it into something. When you lose what made it good and then break, like you said, something in the chain, it is incredibly difficult to put the pieces back together, which you're right. That's exactly what Infinite was. And I guess discussing kind of how we got here, right? My, my general take on where the franchise is is it's in a state of pure chaos and it's not healthy but it is still incredibly relevant because of the good faith that it has built up and we got here like you said i think it all starts with halo 5 i think halo 4 was actually a really good direction for the series like if you take everything out after halo 4 and you look at the game and the story and you say where is Halo going to go? It builds up this idea that you are going to create a new trilogy, a new saga, a new set of the story that is more focused on the person of Master Chief and on the individual relationships that he has, most especially with Cortana and this larger role that he plays as a reclaimer. Halo 5 comes around and... It's not focused on Master Chief. It's not focused on any major conflict he might have with another character. It's like you said, it's a, uh, it's a misdirection in the marketing. So Halo 5 is more so about Locke. There are more Locke mis missions than Master Chief missions. Cortana becomes bad, so it's no longer about Chief and Cortana. She actually becomes the antagonist. So there's a lot of missteps there in where they could have gone and ever since then there's been this kind of consistent stumbling to recover whether that's through developing your own engine to make it next gen and then push the story too far forward into the future and then try to modernize the game with battle royales that never come out and it's just so chaotic, and it is because there is this constant recovery from the major fumble that was Halo 5. Halo 5 is why we are in a state of chaos, and that's really a shame, in my opinion, because I thought Halo 4 was a solid starting off point to something new. It wasn't perfect. Um, it wasn't Halo 1 through 3, but... I still really liked it and I thought it was a good starting point that they fumbled very badly and that's why we're at where we're at. In fact, the Halo TV show is kind of a reflection, in my opinion, of this fumbling of Halo 5 because in the TV show, it seems like they're constantly trying to innovate they're trying to take things in a different direction they're trying to give you something you haven't seen before and it's a hard reboot right the halo tv series is a different timeline and i feel like that decision was made and the direction of the show with all of its quote-unquote innovations like showing his face all the time is a direct result of them trying to find anything that works there's got to be something that the fans will like because they lost them so badly. Um, 
Am I the only one who thinks like the Mandalorian, <clears throat> the concept of the Mandalorian showing his face less than Chief is absolutely hilarious? Absolutely. So he, here is a funny thing is that I read an article this week and it was from an interview of the actor who plays Master Chief. And he said that the reason he shows his, his face so much is because in television, it is difficult to portray characters that you can empathize with if you can't see the actor's face. Now, this is really interesting because back in, I think it was the late 2000s and the early 2010s, there was attempts to make either a movie or a show. Like, that was a thing. Um, and it got canceled. And the reason it got canceled, and I vividly remember this, is they said they didn't know how to make a product without showing the character's face. And instead of what they have now, they just said, no, we're not doing it because we're not going to do that with Master Chief. They just threw it out. This was whenever it was still with Bungie, right? Bungie said, well, we're not going there. We're, uh, we're not doing the whole face thing. And then Mandalorian comes out however many years ago, and the character has no face until the last episode of the first season. Doesn't show his face at all. But through voice acting and through body language, they're able to convey his emotions. They're able to create an empathetic character. But the not showing the face is about like a stoic character, right? There is something behind the mask, but the mask is who that individual is in that moment. That's what we love about Master Chief. We know there's a man back there, but whoever it is is dead to the mask. That mask is his face. And if you wanted to take it a direction like Mandalorian where he does eventually show his face, where that is kind of a reflection of him becoming the man, well, or at least going back to a real man instead of a machine, you could take it that direction. But the larger point is we know that's not true. We know that you can have a show with a made character whose face you do not show. So when I saw The Mandalorian, I thought back to that original Halo show and I was like, oh, maybe now we'll actually get a Halo show because we know we can do this. And they stuck with that same old trope. And I feel like so much of the show is held back by these preconceived notions of what makes good television and what makes a good, you know, visual show. Yeah, I agree. I haven't seen any any at all. I haven't actually personally watched the show myself, right? Um, a lot of my Halo content, when it comes to, like, new stuff, whenever like Halo, whenever I can't, like, really afford to do it right now or, like, I don't have the time, I usually fall on, like, channels like Hit, Hidden Xperia and Halo Follower. Usually those guys are kind of, like, where I learn mostly about the Halo lore. So if, like, I don't want to read the books, I just have those guys, like, sum it up. Um... And they have really good video content on YouTube about that. I don't know if the TV show really knows who its target audience is. I'm not like I hear I see that it's kind of, it goes deep into the lore. It knows what the lore of the franchise is to to a degree. It knows that you know the Spartans are kidnapped children, but from Doctor Halsey, a part of like an experiment to squash rebel factions, then Covenant, and uh, which. Convenient, we have these Spartans that could actually save the day. Um, but for the most part, the TV show just went into a complete new direction with this reboot. And I don't know whether if it's good or bad. Again, I haven't watched it personally. I know you've been watching it and going through it. How are you feeling about the show so far? Um, so if people want to follow my personal youtube channel i will be doing a full recap and review of season one a bit of a uh a shameless plug there but from what i've watched so far i'm about halfway through season one of the show there's a lot of good in fact like there's a lot of really good and i wasn't expecting that because people hated the show so much on the internet for some of its creative decisions but there's a lot to really like but you're absolutely right. This show has no idea who its target audience is. The show is incredibly steeped in Halo lore. Deeply steeped in Halo 
lore. It begins before the rings are ever discovered. It starts with human rebels, which most people who know anything about Halo don't know that the Spartans were made for a human civil war. So you see these rebels and they're talking crap about the UNSC. And if you don't know Halo very well, I'll say this. If you took, yeah, if you took most people who have played Halo 1 through Halo 3, the whole campaign, I'm willing to bet if you gave them a survey and on the survey it said, why were the Spartans made? In fact, just why was Master Chief made into a super soldier? If that was the question, I'm willing to bet a super majority would write the covenant in as the answer. Halo lore is niche. So when the show starts doing things like going back and starting there and doing things on the human civil war and kind of niche lore like reclaimer stuff like chief is attached to this relic this artifact which is clearly relevant to the halo artifact he's one of the only ones who can activate it that's a reclaimer lore type of situation nobody knows anything about that stuff so it's incredibly confusing because they don't explain this if you don't know the halo lore you're not going to know what is going on and they like time i read a halo book i was in junior high reading the fall of reach yeah yeah and that's been like years since i've seen that now i think they have a cartoon 343 made a cartoon about the fall of reach yeah but nobody watches that stuff no nobody watches that stuff. nobody knows this stuff unless you're like a real big halo fan and those exist so hear me out hear me out those exist there are halo fans that exist that know this stuff so you would think that's who the show is made for And then they proceed to make decisions that would appeal to a main audience. For example, Master Chief not wearing his helmet for like 80% of the show. That's something you do for standard TV audiences. Changing the way every character looks. Undoubtedly for DEI purposes, but still changing the way every character looks. And even for obviously not DEI purposes, but for television trope purposes for example making cortana more human that's for people who don't know what halo is but the rest of the show is not for people who don't know what halo is so you isolate your halo audience and you isolate a mainstream audience and now this show has no target audience and that's the most mind-blowing thing about the show to me is that it doesn't know who it's made for And that's part of how the show got to where it's at. All of your internet lore buffs who make YouTube videos and run channels and show off their reviews to millions of Halo fans say your show sucks because you isolated them with your creative decisions. And the mainstream audience that you could have brought in to introduce to Halo and maybe get them even into the games, you have decided you are going to isolate because you really want this to be halo you want to look like halo feel like label halo and be steeped in halo lore and now it's for nobody so i just i cannot grasp who this show is made for uh new sci-fi that's all it is it's a new sci-fi show that's halo skinned that knows the lore and does something new with it i but it's so that, not that's what I'm putting together here yeah, I, that's not the conclusion I would make simply because when you watch other sci-fi shows, they tend to do a very good job in the first three or four episodes of at least gradually, if not right off the bat, explaining the state of the galaxy. It's world building, right? Those first few episodes are really intrinsic to world building. And this is why I say Halo isolates a mainstream audience. There's no world building. They assume the audience knows the Halo universe as they go about making this story. Yeah, but they don't. No, not the people that it's supposed to appeal to. And so I feel like it was an attempt to win back Halo fans in a really dumb way. That's why I go back to Halo 5 with it. It feels like a recovery effort to really get people into Halo again who like Halo. 
and they're like, well, Halo 5 sucked. Change everything and try to do it well. And it's like, that's not what we want. That's what nobody wanted that, but that was what they thought the fans wanted. That's at least the only thing I can grasp. And I really appreciate that the show, unlike, say, new Star Wars, is made for Halo fans. I have no doubt of that. Looks like Halo, sounds like Halo, feels like Halo. Um, all the characters are there, and a lot of it is really good. The stuff with Halsey and Chief, when they interact and when Cortana gets involved, is all really good. But then they have just a lot of weird new crap that I don't know why they did it, other than it was a failed attempt to win back fans because they thought by just being different, it would somehow end up better than Halo 5 in reception. And uh, no, no, it ended up worse. It ended up much, much worse. <laughs> I think that like Halo 4 had this really good sense of direction as to where they wanted to take the franchise. I like yeah. that the Infinity itself kind of plays a main role and mm -hmm. almost a character, kind of like a Star Trek ship mm. level ship. Like oh, that's a, a good that point. Yeah. Remember, and it's like a it's like the biggest one the UNSC ever built, but it that would have given way to actually create I'm going to say Star Trek again, like a more Star Trekky family unit squad mm. where we can actually tell a story of not just the chief, but now the chief is he's a he's a war legend, right? So he could have ha like had a higher position, um really experienced in the midst of combat. And then we have these new characters that they could have really introduced and like fleshed out as they go battle new threats in space, right? Five, I that was the pinnacle downfall, downhill of Halo. Well, not downfall. I want to say like that's when it just took it really downhill. It I was the like last the Jedi of Halo. It was the, the last. Je it was the last Jedi of Halo. Yeah, the last Jedi of Halo. For sure. You know, shockingly, I don't hate Locke as a character. I just hate what they did with the writing of Locke. It's like the same way that I think that Daisy Ridley plays a good Ray. But the writing, it's like, where, what were you, what was the writing team doing, right? I wish the writing team was working as hard as these actors are. Um, I, I really like Locke. And I really like his squad. I actually thought they were pretty sweet. And honestly, like, I don't think people hated the idea of Locke, right? No, it, it's... The marketing was so on point for Halo 5. The marketing was great. I loved the idea of, I'm going to end up playing as a Spartan hunting Master Chief. That was so novel. And it was... It was brilliant. And then they fumbled it so bad because that's not what it was. You, I feel like if the marketing team had been the plot writers, you would have ended up with a great plot. I think if the marketing team wrote, yeah, if they yeah. wrote the story, it probably would have been a better story. That's a fact, yeah. I think the marketing team probably had a better idea. I don't know. I kind of don't... I'm not feeling... I wish they had concepted the banished sooner. That's right. what I think. Yeah, yeah. I... So so this is kind of leading into our next segment. So I'm going to cut you off a little bit and try to focus this back into kind of this format. So reportedly, a new Halo game has been in development since 2020 using Unreal Engine 5. And then some of the rumors claim that 343 have considered a hard reboot of the franchise. All of this while season two of the Halo show is marketing for the fall of Reach. Let's focus in on the direction that Halo should go, where we would like to see it go, and what we think would really benefit the franchise. We'll start with the Halo show, and then we're going to go into the games. So let's start with season two of the Halo show as it markets the fall of Reach. What would you like to see from it? I hope it stays a little bit more accurate to the game for Halo Reach. Like, uh, I know it stars different characters in the game. But we are following Chief's story. I think it's going to be more interesting to see where Chief was during the fall of Reach. So, again, I, I think it would be more beneficial for them to try to 
with what we have, try to keep in lockstep with the book. Mm, yeah, that's a good that call. Will ultimately, make the fans happy, and I think that's what will also benefit to the Halo newcomers. Like they'll just know a, vi- a more vague idea of what the actually no, not a vague idea of what the book is about. They will have a more they'll have a more knowledge basis about what the book was, right? Because like what we have is a season one that's already established. We can't change that. So that is going to affect the fall of reach as a story altogether. I want to see how the fall of reach ends. I I, I really want to know is season three going to be chief on the halo ring. Yeah. I know that they're teasing the halo ring and some of the marketing, like they teased it a little bit. Um, Oh, they did? I don't... Yeah, in the trailer. In the trailer, they showed it um, very briefly. My assumption is that's how season two is going to end. Maybe halfway through season two, uh, maybe the fall of Reach is going to be really quick. I hope not. My hope for the second season is that it's really focused on the fall of Reach. And like the game, it's really focused on the consequences of war. One of the things the show does really well, especially in the first scenes... Um, in the first episode, it show off just how horrifyingly vicious and threatening the Covenant is. That's something the Halo Reach game did better than any of the Halo games that came before and since, is that you see the Covenant wipe a whole planet, and as you go through each step of the plot, where you think something is accomplished, you realize the threat is so much bigger that the impact that you and your squad have made in the game gets superseded by just how vicious and threatening the Covenant is. I think the Covenant should be a genuine threat. And it feels like it in in the first season so far. Yeah, I don't want Chief to come off as like a ultra Superman hero. I want him to actually see the Covenant as like, this is a real contender that could very well wipe us out. I um, think it would be really good if, like the game, you see Chief do these superhuman Spartan-like things. And that as soon as he accomplishes these tasks and these missions, the Covenant do something that is so much larger and so much more uh destructive that you realize wow what a what a hopeless cause saving reaches that's what it should feel like reach is supposed to feel like a hopeless cause yeah and actually i want to back that up a little bit uh yes the hopeless cause factor i think this is where we can really flesh out these characters we can really start to flesh out the sergeant we could <clears throat> flesh out the colonel We could flesh out Chief a little bit more, but now this is the opportunity to have your audience care for your characters a lot more, especially since now this is the fall of, this is the event of the fall of Reach. There's more, it's, everything is now at stake. So how do you reflect that concept of there's a real danger to a lot of people dying here to how do I make it so that my audience likes these characters? Yeah. We care about losing them, right? Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm really, I'm really preying on this. I don't want season two to be some characters die, forgettable characters die. That's not what I want it to be. I, I really, I really hope that they can put together that chief's team, as well as some of the other characters throughout the franchise. Like these are characters I really want to care about and I don't want to see them go. I might see one or two of them go, but at least make their send off worthwhile. I agree. Right? It's an opportunity to essentially go Game of Thrones or Walking Dead, where you show that this show is going to take punches, right? It's going to take its shot. It's going to... I don't know how to phrase it, but I want the show to be consequential. Yes. I want it to have consequences, and I want to see things I haven't seen, but I want to see it in the context of what Reach is supposed to look and feel like. For example, take the character of Miranda Keys and her father, Captain Keys. They're both incredibly essential to Halo 1 through Halo 3. We expect them to survive Reach and be there, right? But what if you had Miranda Keys die in Reach and everyone's like, wait, this is 
not supposed to happen. And then you see the character of Captain Keys as he deals with the death of his daughter. And suddenly Captain Keys, as an individual, you care about and see more humanized than you did in the games. And then let's say he becomes the grave mind like he does in Halo 1, that becomes more consequential. You have an opportunity to build characters and moments in a way you didn't going into the actual gaming franchise by using Reach before you get to the rest of what we know as the Halo trilogy plot. So I'm so, yeah, go for it. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. No, please. Um I th- I do agree with you. If we're doing the Halo reboot, I think there's room to start making a couple of changes. I would maybe say I wouldn't aim for the Keys family quite yet. I would change up like maybe some of the lore stuff. Like have it so that maybe one of Chief's team members dies. I'm sure we'll see that. I have no doubt of that. And then try to keep the Halo 1 through 3. And this is also for the fans, right? I, I, I hope I'm kind of speaking for... I hope I'm speaking for them when I say this. Try to keep Halo 1, 2, and 3. If they're going to bring the seasons into that storyline, try to keep keep it so that those games are most intact. But the lore stuff, maybe you can change that up a little bit. Like, um, oh gosh, who is the squad members? I'm trying... I'm already... I'm blanking on names. Oh gosh, there's... I know there's Kai... And then there's uh, honestly, they gave him such weird sci fi names. I don't remember, dude. They gave him whack names. It's just Silver Team, as far as I'm I'm concerned. I'm blanking on that one girl that was like one of Chief's best friends in the book. I I forgot her name. I niche lore, man. It's niche lore. (laughs) I wouldn't mind maybe having one of those characters die, but I wouldn't focus on like keys. I wouldn't focus on the sergeant. I would try making it so that different characters throughout the lore die but keep the established halo one two and three timeline characters in line for those events if they plan on filming those yeah i'm sure they have a long-term plan that's something i've kind of deduced from watching the show is that they have a very long-term idea for this show and i think they have most of it written out already that would be my guess and that's part of why i'm willing to give it a very long chances like you said i would like to see what they do with the traditional franchise and its plot if they start going way off the rails it might lose me but if you can keep some essential parts of that what these first two seasons provide is a way to change elements of it in a practical sense while maintaining the parts that really draw us in so you can do something new you can build up to something with effect and with feeling and with weight but you can still you know keep what we want (laughs) you know put the stuff in it that we want like i still want to see master chief with his mask on fighting scarabs on new mombasa like i want that but if you want to make me also might just be oh wait no that's earth yeah that's like halo 2 okay but i still want to see that stuff i want to see those moments those grand epic moments from the games this is an opportunity to build into that and to create weight with it and although i feel they fumbled a lot in season one i don't feel like season one and season two are the most essential i feel like it builds platforms into the most important part of the show which is when they get to halo And we'll see, we'll see, they might get to it real early in season two, and the fall of Reach might suck, and it might just all collapse, but we'll we'll see. I am willing to give it a shot, I'm gonna finish season one, and then, um, we'll see. I will give season two a full shot, and if it sucks, it sucks. But, let's go into, now, the games, because this is, this is what we want, right? The, The show we spent a lot of time on, but really, it is secondary to what Halo is. Halo is a gaming franchise. Where do we go with the games? Especially because a new game is in development, so we can hopefully theorize as to where they're going to take it, but I know some of the things that I want out of Halo. I know where I want it to go, and... It's not what most people might want, but I want to hear what you want out of the franchise. So let's start with that before we get into anything else. You 
Gabe, your desires for Halo, if you could write it out right now. Oh, so I've had, we've had, I might have had this discussion a couple of times before with other people. I think the 10 year plan for Halo Infinite might be out the window. It has to be. Through. It has, it has to, to be. That was, that was, two, yeah, after you, after you. No two different focuses. I really wish they had stuck with the 10 year plan for Infinite, but I feel at the same time we're kind of. I don't know if this franchise really knows where it wants to go. I think that 10-year like plan like... was reliant on slip space as well. And that's out the yeah. window, obviously. So, Yeah, I, I, I feel like the, with the, the way that COVID affected the industry as, uh, as a whole, as well as slip space engine, I guess I'm guessing not performing. And as... And like, like, like we've already mentioned, like Halo Five really took the series downhill. I don't think Three Four Three knew how to recover. So, I'm not against a reboot. I'm really not. Yeah. I don't see like personally. I wouldn't even know where else to take it. Like, I feel like I feel even playing the Halo Infinite game in the campaign. I feel like the, I you know the whole time playing it, I really felt like the banished was just I don't want to like say a seance but because I don't really know what that word means but I want to say like the banished are just there as a filler for the covenant a seance I'm sorry that was awesome <laughs> yeah I, I feel like I feel like the the banished don't really have a I mean like I get that they're a genuine threat and I think Halo Wars 2 really did a good job with them I would have watched a movie if they had made that um, just because I, I, I should have played Halo 2, honestly. I just watched all the cutscenes and kind of listened to, like, some of the background story. The Banished are an okay faction. I just don't... I just can't shake the feeling that this is a recovery attempt. And it doesn't work for It me. does feel like Halo Infinite was a soft reboot. You're back on a Halo ring. It's the same biome that you're used to from the second level of Halo Combat Evolved. It looks like the original Halo games. You're fighting the Covenant again. It was in many ways a soft reboot. But I'm with you. Like if I was if I was the director of Halo right now, I would look at the soft reboot and kind of the dis disjointed jankiness of Halo Infinite story and say we don't know what we're doing with this. We really don't have a direction besides we wanted it to feel like Halo again and we did everything we could to make that a reality. But in my opinion, it just came out very janky. It felt like I was out on a hike in a Washington cascade. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really good for Infinite if it was just one of the many missions in the game. I just wish that we had more environment and I wish those environment factors would affect gameplay. Yeah, so you want more environments, you want more more of that uh, diversity of map in future Halo. I hear you. Yeah, and that's what I'm hoping like the new games offer, and I wish I, I'm hoping that they actually introduce that environment does affect gunplay. Like, let's say the snow biome, right? There's a blizzard going through at certain portions of the mission. You can't use snipers. Long range is out the window. You can mm, only shoot at one. Interesting. Like, that's a, a that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Have more environmental factors that affect gunplay. Kind of like what Battlefield Four did with the um, multiplayer. Like, uh, oh gosh, what's that one map with the islands? And then eventually everything starts turning into a tsunami and turns chaotic. Yeah, I I never played it. <laughs> I haven't played any Battlefield. I'm not lying. I'm not a Battlefield guy. I, I'm a single player guy for the most part, unless it's Halo or Fortnite. But right. uh, I also think like Halo. I w now that we have more characters established that the fans are familiar with, like the newer aspect, if we are going to do a reboot, I want to see more of those characters fleshed out. I do want to see like yeah. more ODSTs. I do want to see like the perspective of the war through the, like the basic Marines. Yeah. So so. I guess just so the audience is aware of what you mean by if they do a reboot, there are rumors out there that 343 is considering a hard reboot of the franchise. I, 
I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know how legit that is, if it's insider stuff, but I have heard from not just Gabe, from multiple people that that is on the table as somewhere to take the franchise. Now, if you were to ask me the same question of where do I want the franchise to go, it is a hard reboot. That's actually what I want. I'm, I'm tired of how disjointed this franchise has become since Halo 4. None of it makes sense to me. The lore has gotten too deep, too steep, too niche. I don't care. I don't care about the characters. I don't like the weapon that they introduced. The banished mean nothing to me. It's just the Covenant again. And when I look at Halo Infinite, I just wish that it was Halo 1, but modern. You know, I just wish it was a new thing. So if you were to ask me where I want it to go, it is a hard reboot. A very hard reboot. I mean, just take it from the top in terms of the games. So I'll ask you if they do a hard reboot. If they do a hard take. No, it might be. It might be. I want the franchise taken from the top with the games. I think the legacy games, the original one through three, those are always going to have a place in our hearts, right? Like those games are never going to go anywhere. We have the master chief collection. We could always replay through those, but I agree. Like the franchise has become in the, especially in the later years, way too convoluted. And the banished are a cover up for losing the covenant a little bit. Because now they don't know who they want their new bad guy to be. No, but they want it to be familiar. Like they want those covenant aliens because those have always been the bad guys. You've always killed the covenant aliens. So yeah, they have to do them somehow, and so why not just reboot it, and they're the bad guys again? We're, yeah, in, a, we're in a new generation of gamers, a new generation of, of Halo fans, on top of the fact that the ones that you've had so far just don't like it. We just don't like where it's going. So just take it from the top, because we both agreed that we like 343. Their weakest point is the storytelling. Well, get rid of the baggage of the stories that are already there that they're trying to recover from, and then take everything good that 343 does and give them the freedom of a story and let's see what happens instead of the constraints of making them work within this convoluted mess. So again, my question to you is, what do you want to see a Halo hard reboot look like? If that's the direction they go, let's just say that is, it's official. What would you want to see? What are some elements of that that are essential to you or you think would be good for it? I want to see the perspective of the war through other people, not just Chief. That's my hot take. All right. I don't want, like, yeah, I get Chief still needs to be the hero. I'm not saying anything else, right? Like, they're still the Spartans, but I would love to see the perspective of the war through the Marines. Dude, a Sergeant Johnson campaign level? Oh, dude, let's go. Let's go. That'd be sick. You know, I, I'm, be I'm sick. full send on that. Full send. I don't know what that's going to look like, but, you know, Sergeant Johnson is a Spartan 1. How does Spartan 1s play? That's interesting. That that's interesting. Yeah, like, there's, every game has a combat Bible, and I think even... And this is where I'm going with this, right? Every game has a combat Bible. Chief should play different than the Marines. And the Marines should play different than Chief and the ODSTs. And every little, every soldier should have their own role play in the game. And I think those role plays would make the game a little bit more dynamic for the Halo franchise. It's kind of like how Titanfall did it, right? There's a difference between playing a pilot and playing a Titan. It changes up the whole gameplay the moment you get into that mech. Same with Halo. I feel like we have these different soldiers. And even even at that, like I do want to see a little bit more Arbiter, too. Like I want to see the war through the alien perspective. Um, and I will be honest, if I was going to do a hard reboot, I want the great journey to be true. Elaborate on that for me. What does that mean? I So... The original franchise focus at the Great Journey was like this big lie. It's actually Halo is a super weapon. What if they turned it on and it's not? What if the, what if the prophets were right? So imagine you're a writer or producer on this and someone has thrown that out to you in a writer's meeting and they look at you and they say, Gabe, like what happens when you turn on the ring then? Like what is the Great Journey in this situation? So I think the great journey 
So you're going to have to tackle a couple of things with that, right? Like now we're getting into new new territory. What are the Halo? What is the Halo's ring? What is the Halo ring's new purpose? Where did the forerunners that built the Halo rings? Where did they go? What if the ring was a form of ascension? I haven't really fleshed this out, right? I'm just kind of pulling this out of my head as I'm. No, it's interesting. It's interesting. Keep going. I I feel like the the Halo rings should be a form of an ascension. Whether like digital ascension or a spiritual ascension, I don't know. Something more metaphysical. Something more metaphysical, exactly. Yeah. And I I think it would be very fascinating if the because again none of the forerunner technology works with the aliens. It only works with humans. So what happens when an alien forces it to go through? For them, does it go entirely wrong? Yeah, I, I mean, I see that kind of leaning into some of the Reclaimer lore. Like, only certain people can activate the ring. Well, maybe only certain chosen people can go through the ring, and it really is a portal, but um, it does something wrong if you don't go through it. And so, or if you go through it and you're the wrong person, it will do something wrong. But if you're the right person, some type of metaphysical thing actually does happen. So it's not a lie per se, but maybe... Like, get some, and Halo has always had messianic mythology in it. So maybe yeah. take that another step further, make it even more mythological, more metaphysical, more spiritual. I see what you're going with there. Yeah, and I would say, like, I don't have an entire story fleshed out in my head for this, right? But this is, like, kind of the direct, I'm just kind of throwing this idea out there. Like, what if the prophets were right, but the the role was not meant for them. It was meant for humanity. Which, you know, their whole reli their whole false religion was essentially built on them ascending. So, like, how does that affect their thinking? How does that affect the covenant's thinking? Um, I want to know what happened to the forerunners if that were the case. Mm -hmm. What happened to them after they built? Because, like, we clearly see the remnants of their technology but they're nowhere to be found. Where did they go? Mm -hmm. That's what I think that that's why I think Halo should go. We add more of a metaphysical aspect to it rather than it's just a weapon to take out the flood. Yeah. Yeah. And this kind of gets into my pitch. We've discussed this before, but my, my biggest pitch for Halo, if it does a hard reboot is cut the flood. And that will upset a lot of people. It's a hot take, but I think if you're going to redo the whole thing and take it from the top as a plot point, as characters, as an antagonist, no flood, none doesn't exist. It's not in this universe of Halo. And my reason for this is that the flood are actually the narrative binding of the original Halo trilogy. The flood are feels locked because of the flood. Yeah, the, the flood is why everything is happening, right? Halo exists because of the flood. The Covenant are religious zealots because of the Halo rings. They are at war with humanity over the technology, over the religious understandings of these Halo rings and the Great Journey. This is all happening because the rings are made for the flood. It's a lie, like the great journey is a lie because of the flood, but the great journey is a religious belief because of the halo rings, which exist because of the flood. It is this like nexus, this core to the narrative and the plot points which drive the halo trilogy. When you remove that, you are forced to give us something different, right? You're forced to give us something entirely new narratively. You give new motivations to people, but when you do that, this is kind of the cool thing about Halo 1, is that imagine you remake Halo 1. That's your reboot. You start there. And pretty much every single thing is the same until you get to 343 Guilty Spark. And then things start to take a turn because you realize, wait, where, where's the flood? Yep. What is going on here? You can still have all those characters... They can behave the same way. They can be familiar. You can maintain their personalities. But 
the world around them is so fundamentally different without the flood. And suddenly you're asking, wait, what does the covenant want? Why are the halo rings here? That mystery, that sense of mystery returns and you can take it in all kinds of ways from there and you can make something new. So I just like, I have this vision of like, I'm playing through the halo reboot and everybody's just like, three or four hours in, there's like, oh, this is such a drag, man. This is just the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Like maybe you got some new guns and environments, but they're like, the story's the same. And you get to that point where like, you're in that room and you expect the flood to burst out and it just never happens. And you're like, all right, what's going on? And that will let you take the franchise in so many different directions. And so if you're gonna hard reboot and I want something original, take the flood out and let's see what you do with that. We're we're both in agreement because I I would say like I feel like the flood holds too much of a keychain, exactly to to the franchise and it puts it in a chokehold. Yeah. So I, I I kind of agree. Like I want the sense of mystery of the Halo to re- to be restored, and the only way I can see that being done is remove the flood. Now I have a little bit of a cop out, right? Because again, I do want to please. I do want to. I would rather please the Halo fans. If an al- my my take on it was if an alien uses the halo rings, they turn into the flood. Not built for them. Yeah. That's and my cop out. That's but one way to do it. That's one way to do it. My issue with that idea. I don't want the flood though. Yeah. My I- don't want that's fair. My issue with that idea specifically is that gameplay wise, like, yeah, you can make it a different faction, but just gameplay wise and almost narrative wise you end up in a very similar place, but the way you got there was kind of different. You still have to take out the flood. You still have to activate the halo rings. Like there's still too much of that familiarity and that binding to take it somewhere deeply original, deeply new. This is what I would, this is actually what I'm, what I'd be more excited to talk about with. If I was to do a hard reboot for the first game, I would do everything I just said, right? Have all these different characters that play differently. You get to see the mission of Halo, the first game, through the perspective of different characters, including, in my opinion, the Arbiter. Mm -hmm. And in a weird niche, like these missions that you play with each of these characters, they all converge. So where they're all going to kind of meet up with each other, I think a fight needs to break out between the Arbiter and these other characters. That causes the destruction of the first Halo ring. So now we're actually seeing the destruction of the first Halo ring, not just through Chief's eyes, but now the Arbiter's eyes. So that's really going to take home Halo 2's narrative in this new franchise. Because Halo 2 was more of a narrative game to me. It has, it, to me, it had the best dialogue, the best. I had the best yeah. feeling for a, a Halo game. I don't even know if you need to destroy Halo rings in the next one, because when you give them an entirely new purpose, I, yeah, I don't know where you're getting farther ahead than I've even like considered because after the flood are gone, I don't really know where you take it from there. I just know that that's so essential for me in a reboot in order to reestablish the lore in a, in a new way. Oh, I do want the Halo to be more of a mystery again. Yeah, um, I think that's so essential. I think like maybe if the Arbiter tried to turn on the Halo ring for the Great Journey, what if that self-destructed the ring? That would be interesting. And then you have to figure out why. Like, You're like, why did he... Yeah, why can't he use it? Why can he turn it on, but why does it blow up kind of thing? I want to take your idea of like having multiple main characters to where i think it would be really sweet imagine you have master chief the arbiter and odst and sergeant johnson like those are like four main characters you have and call of duty has done this for forever where they have multiple main characters and you're jumping between stories and they actually always did that pretty well for i would say the first three modern warfares and the black ops games but i like how in halo 3 the arbiter and chief are always together and you have these other guys with them i think it would be really cool if like their stories converge into a game where you can choose who to play as and And they all play different yeah 
and they all play differently and then you can play with friends and you're all picking these different characters and trying different play styles in the same mission that would be that would be wild i actually like where you're taking that with the multiple protagonists with different playing styles and you can make such a cool co-op experience out of that the character gunplay altogether would drastically change how you play the game especially when you're playing with friends on co-op mm -hmm. right because now everybody has a role to play does that make sense absolutely so it certain, does certain environment uh there are certain parts of the environment or on the map that would be better suited for certain characters right like there might be portions of the map where it's like it's a little bit too tanky it'd probably be better for the chief to go that route or uh, it would probably be more beneficial to go a little bit stealthy over here. That's like ODSTs. But or like narrow hallways that are stealth, like Arbiter with an energy sword type thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh. exactly. You see, you see how that's all kind of coming together. Like there's a game here. Yeah, yeah. Where we just don't focus on the chief being like the ultimate badass hero. It's like, yes, I love chief for that. But I kind of want to see I, I want to see something new personally. And, yeah. I, and I think if if we are going to change it with a hard reboot, I'd affect the gunplay a little bit. And that's how I would play with the gunplay. All right. Yeah, no, that's that's a good call. So I feel like when it comes to a hard reboot, we've kind of settled on maybe a more spiritual game where the rings have different consequences. I personally don't want the flood. You kind of reimagine the flood, but something different with the flood. Don't do the same thing. That way you change the nature of the rings and then something that makes the gameplay new whether that's adding characters who play differently or environments and biomes i think all of these things together would make a halo game that feels brand new yet is intimately familiar and i think that's yeah. a, like the really important thing i want something new i want something i haven't seen before and i want it to be able to be taken in a direction i haven't seen before but i do want it intimately familiar which was the failures with the show the show is not intimately familiar. It's intimately unfamiliar in so many aspects. So what's good about it being a video game is that what's going to feel familiar is the way that the guns, the guns still behave the same, right? Your DMR is more meant for your headshots. Your needlers are meant to like stick it to them and have them blow up, but limited ammo. Like the guns should feel exactly the same as they feel in Infinite. But we put them in the hands of different characters, and how does that affect it? Oh, that's a good call. Yeah, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, right? Like, the Marine, in my opinion, like, the ODST is not going to be able to handle, like, a Spartan laser, right? I think the Spartan yeah. laser should be exclusive to, like, maybe a Spartan, or if he does end up being able to operate it, because I... Do you ever operate a Spartan laser in a Halo ODST? I don't remember that. I, I don't recall. I think so. I think I remember when we played through ODST, I used a Spartan laser and it handled just fine. It was, I mean, an ODST, yeah, you're playing an ODST, but you're essentially a Spartan with less shields. <laughs> right. That may not matter for the point I'm going to try and make here is that like you have a ODST soldier pick up a Spartan laser, big, bulky, heavy, can barely handle the recoil. Have Chief pick up the Spartan is uh, Spartan laser. He's got no problem operating the thing, that so he can fire sense. it probably faster than an ODST would. But the ODST could probably handle and specialize weapons, right? Like the suppressed SMG. Yeah. Well. Yeah. All right. Thank you for this conversation, Gabe. This was quite incredible. Very enlightening. Um, I hope people really enjoyed hearing us talk about Halo. There's a lot to talk about. The franchise is in a very interesting place. I'm looking forward to seeing where it ends up, despite maybe some pessimism about where it's at. Um, but yeah, if you guys have made it to this part of the podcast, you've made it to the end, I just want to say thank you so much. This is our first episode, and I'm looking forward to more discussions. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts, what your favorite part was, or maybe some other topic that you'd like to hear us discuss. Um, you can find me on YouTube at Drake McRae. So if you just type in Wow, my light just went out. It just died. How about that? Right at the end. Um, YouTube.com slash at Drake McRae, where uh, I'll be reviewing the Halo show season one in a very thorough analysis. 
and you can check out some of the other stuff i'll be reviewing persona 3 reload coming out i'll be doing that as well gabe is there uh anything you'd like to say before we go any socials anything you'd like to link us to okay so you can follow my instagram account uh at gabe underscore annan um, I just do like mainly photography on that page right now. I'm still building up my 3D portfolio and I'm about to start getting into some vid music videos and some skit writing. So kind of be on the lookout for that right now. It's just kind of a portfolio build up. This is kind of like this, this, this podcast is a brain exercise for me about how people think about media. So if I ever want to make it, in, if I ever want to like maybe get into the game industry or anything really, I think long format discussions like this is actually going to be play important roles into future development. And I think like most developers should start doing stuff like this. Kind of have their opinions challenged. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, all right guys, this has been Caffeine Duck episode 1. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be looking forward to the next episode with all of you.